Well, very good morning. Uh, I'm with uh, Adam Catterall, Catterall, my co-host on Fight Night, of course, on Talk Sports. Um, uh, founder of Fight Disciples, presenter extraordinaire. And um, also, of course, um, Britain's Roberto Duran, as I like to call him. It's Robert Smith, General Secretary, leader of the British Boxing Board of Control. Rob, we're, we're going to have a chat this morning about... Um, you know, there, there was quite a lot of controversy and talk last weekend after the Josh Warrington, Mauricio Lara uh, event. First boxing back since uh, the pandemic lockdown, the third lockdown. Um, there were a lot of unhappy people. Let's talk about the Josh Warrington fight, first of all, and, uh, and get into the fact that people were unhappy with the way that fight played out. Yeah, no, I can understand that. I was obviously there. Um, I, I actually think he was hurt in the first round. He never really covered from the first round, to be honest. Um, but when he went down, he went down heavily. Um, he obviously looked in, in a little bit of distress. Um, we have, and Howard was a referee, Howard Foster was a referee. I've every faith in Howard. Um, he's, I spoke to him afterwards and I've received his report since. If I spoke to him on the evening and spoke to him again on the Monday or the Tuesday after the bout, he said to me that his eyes were completely clear and he answered any qu and, and the questions he was given. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's, hindsight is a wonderful thing, 99% you know, vision. Um, but, you know, Howard had to make a call in split seconds. He gave him every opportunity to continue and he decided that was the way to do it. And, um, you know, people are saying, you know, lots of people saying a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things thrown at us or certainly thrown at me. Um, I put my faith in Howard. Um, I know all the referees and the judges I appoint, I have faith in, and he did his job. Um, people can criticise afterwards, no problem at all. But at the time, I'm very happy with what he did. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? Out of the two things that we're going to speak about, Howard's in the heat at the moment. It's a very, very difficult job being a referee in a, in a fight and you've got to make that split decision. It's very easy being sat on my couch at home and making decisions and, and thinking how, how something should play out. You just mentioned there regarding an appraisal process there, Robert, just for fans at home and transparency of how things are uh, looked at post event. What's the process with referees? If there is a situation like we saw last weekend where, for example, people thought maybe it should be stopped in the fourth. What's the process after the fight for the referee? It does frustrate me somewhat that people don't think that we're transparent or that there's no procedures in place. Somebody mentioned or oh, the Football Association will have referees come in front of them. We, we do that. Um, you know, we have that procedure in place. Um, we've re I've now received all the reports from the whole show, not, not just that particular bout, but every single show we have reports come in to see if things have gone wrong, see if things have gone right, how we can improve things. And we look at them very, very seriously and things have been changed. You know, we're, we're living in strange times with regard to sporting events and boxing events and some things that are occurring, not, not particularly on the actual fights itself, but some things that are occurring backstage that we've never dealt with before. So we have to look at those sort of things and see how we can adapt. Some things promoters might be doing right, some things they may be doing wrong, some things we, we can tweak with regard to our procedures, some things that we should be doing better. Uh, and maybe the things that's, that's right. So there are procedures in place for that to happen. I, I've now received all the reports from the officials and the judges, et cetera, from that show. And I will then obviously present that to the board at the next available meeting and we'll decide, they'll decide what they need to do. But, you know, I, I, you know it, it is very difficult with regard to a individual's decision to allow a contest to go ahead. Um, and ultimately, once he decided that fight should continue, there was no other time, in, I, I believe, is in a position to stop that bout until the end. Um, yeah. Because I actually think that Josh was clawing his way back into the bout. I think he won the fifth round. Um, some other people may disagree with that, but I think he did. Sure. Um, it was a world to, I mean, he, in all but name, as I've been uh, said before, in all but name, he was a world champion. Um, mm -hmm. That was a world championship bout. Th this was something you give people an opportunity to recover. As I said, if it was a four-rounder or a six-rounder, maybe the decision would be different because somebody can come back and rebuild. But at that point in their career, you know, a, a defeat like that is very, very different. And whether that's wrong or right, I don't know. I've been in the business a long, long time. 
I've, you know, I've been an amateur boxer, professional boxer, trainer, and my father was a manager. So I think I've got some idea of what people's thoughts are. Robert, um, on, Robert, on that note, um, going back to that fourth round where Josh was clearly hurt and he'd been knocked down and he kind of clawed his way to survive to the end of the round. Adam and I were live on air at the time and we were watching it on the monitor and Adam felt, God, Howard should have stopped that. I was half there with you, wasn't I, Adam, at the time? I yep. wasn't totally sure. We were live on air at the time. We had a guest, I think, as well in that moment. Should it have been people criti critiquing his corner, his father and his trainer, Sean O'Hagan, the same man, were in his corner? Could they have not taken the decision at the end of the fourth round to have pulled him out rather than Howard Foster get all the flack? Well, they could have done. Um, you know, I, I hate that there's this thing about the father. Sean Hagen is a trainer, first of all. Certainly there's a connection between a father, but he's a trainer. Yeah. You know, my father trained me. Enzo Kalzaki trained Joe Kalzaki. There's, there's the history of people being in the corner who are fathers or related in some way. This weekend, we've got Campbell... Campbell Hatton take, uh, turned in pro with his uncle in the corner. So, you know, you know, so there is an emotional feeling on that, but you would hope they're professional enough to be able to divide that, divide that sort of line. Um, they know that person because of the gym work, because of the situations they've been to uh, in fights before, better than anybody else. And, you know, he came back to that corner, and I am told by the referee and told by the corner that he was talking, he was coherent, he was annoyed because of what had happened, but he was okay to continue. They felt he was okay to continue. Um, and I think you've got to give that respect. You've got to give that um, license to them to make that decision. Shall we move on to judging? Because in the Zelfa Barrett kick on Martinez fight, again, um, it caused a little bit of a stir with fans and pundits alike. Um, the official scorecards for this fight were 1-18, one level on two cards. Uh, and 116-113 uh, in the favour of Zelfa Barrett. Now, in, in the aftermath of this, and I'm coming from an angle, Robert, of wanting to understand more. I want to get better myself on this. And I've spoken to so many fans, so many pundits, so many ex-fighters, and nobody has come to me with, a, with an explanation of how you can get to 118, 111 in that particular fight. What was your initial reaction when those cards came in? And, and now, with hindsight, as the dust has settled, What's your reaction now to it? I thought on the night that Barrett won it by a couple of rounds. Um, I just thought his cleaner work inside, uh, where I mean, I, it's very difficult to explain to people, really. And, and you know, obviously, I've been banging my head against a brick wall and getting criticised for it. You know, I, at the moment, because of the conditions we are working in with boxing, I am six metres away behind a perspex screen. Other people are further back behind me, looking through the same perspex screen as me. TV are looking, what, 30 yards, 40 yards away in a box in the air behind a perspex screen, but with the benefit of, of um, slow motion. Other pundits are in an angle and the corner, whatever. So it's very difficult to say the judges, et cetera, are wrong. I fully accept that the scores were wide. However, and, I, and, and I've spoken to Gareth about this on many occasions, every round is a contest. So the scoring system we have now is if you win the round by a small margin, you get 10-9. If you lose a round by a, small, by a large margin, you get 10-9. So that can throw that fight out completely, as in the view of what people are watching. Now, I don't think that would have made a difference in this fight, because I think the rounds were very close. But I also think that Kiko, his industry was tremendous. For the man of his age, his experience, etc., don't forget, we're dealing with somebody who's been in with some of the best boxers in the world. He knows all the he knows all the tricks. He knows exactly what to do, and he knows how to get the view or the eye of the judges, etc., and the referee. He walked forward and he threw a lot of punches. I accept that. A lot of them landed on the arms, and landed, a lot of them landed on the gloves. In my opinion, I thought that uh, Zelfa landed the cleaner shots with the little counters, the little uppercuts up close. I accept the scores were wide. Um, however, as I've already said, every round is a contest. So therefore you edge it to whatever. Once that round is done, that scorecard is given to the referee, then handed to myself or my colleague, Dennis Gilmartin, who takes it back to the people to collate those scores. 
Once that round is done, it's done. You forget about everything else that's come before. So it's not a feeling. It's not like, oh, we felt sorry for so-and-so. It's not a feeling of how you thought. It's the fact of this, actually, that round is done. And I, and I have been in this game long enough to watch, watch a fight on, uh, in live, go back and watch it on television and think I've seen a completely different fight. And Robert. I'm sure Gareth would say the same. Yeah, thing. well, no, it's, we've spoken about this many times, haven't we, Robert? And there's an instance, Adam, that I can remember, I can't remember exactly which fight it was, but, and I score a lot of fights because I have to score them, um, you know, when I'm writing, maybe not when we're broadcasting, it's different when you're broadcasting. Um, I have not looked at my card sometimes. In my mind, from the fight I'm seeing, I see one guy in, on the optics of it, because we're talking about optics here in yeah. Los Angeles, aren't we? On the optics of it, I thought, nah, he's probably got that. When I look at my card, it's a draw. And that just shows you when you judge or score a fight in discrete units, it's a completely different process scoring it compared to watching it. And I think you just mentioned about education, Adam. I think yeah. it's good for all of us in the media. Absolutely. To go and judge alongside a referee, a uh, judge one night, sitting beside him, and let's see if we come up with the same thing. Or if our scores went out to the fans, whether they'd be outraged. I think, like you say, some you can have a fight that is razor tight, but someone wins it 120, 108. It really is possible. And that's just the way they've seen it. And like you say, Martinez knows to be busy in the first 30 seconds and the last 30 seconds of a round. He knows all these tricks. Um, and, but it, it, on the generality of it, it looked impossible to score at 118, 111. But that's the way they've, they've seen it. Have you spoken to the judges at all, Robert? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have a meet up, we quick meet up to, after a show to discuss things. Um, and then we obviously, you get things to cool down a little bit and then you speak to them later on. Um, but they were genuinely surprised that everybody was kicking off on social media with regard to the scores because they felt very confident what they'd done. And then, you know, we got two judges there who had the same score. I mean, that's quite yeah. unusual, but two judges had the same score. So they were, they could see the same things. I mean, the one, the one thing that I've always thought about, and, and I have spoken to Gareth about this before, you can win the first two minutes of a round and lose the third, third, third minute, and everybody remember the last minute of that round and think about what happened. When I went to, I, I watched a show many years ago now, unfortunately, was, um, was um, Jason Cook uh, against Lenny Dawes at York Hall. And Jason Cook won the first six rounds relatively straightforward. But he lost the next six rounds to Lenny, to Lenny Dawes boxed really, really well. And it was a draw. And everybody screamed blue murder because it was a draw. Because they only remembered what happened in the last six rounds. You've got to, you know, the whole thing has to be considered about the whole contest and, uh, and that whole particular round. Just because you win two minutes of a round and lose a third minute of a round doesn't mean you're going to give, a, give the bloke who's lost a round a round somewhere down the long edge because you feel, feel um, beneficial to do that. It's mm. just, unfortunately, that's how the system works. Regarding the system then, Robert, does it need to change to make it a little bit easier for fans, I suppose, to be able to understand it? Because you just mentioned there, you can, you can nick around 10-9 and you can dominate a guy and still get the same score. Do we need to look at that and maybe change it? Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I've, well, I don't think changing the score, scoring system on that particular fight would have made a difference, no. to be honest with you, Adam, because they was nip and tuck every round. So you, you, you either go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that, um, and I've certainly stood up, and my boss Charlie Giles has stood up um, at conventions in the past and say, "Listen, if so, if it's a tight round, it should be ten nine. If it's a right a wide round, it should be ten eight. And then we work our way down with knockdowns, etc. Um, so that would maybe be um, uh, a way to go forward. However, you know, for us just to do it on our own it isn't going to work." You know, you've got to go the work. The whole world has got to change how it does. And I've always, and, you know, I'm open as anybody else. The biggest problem with boxing is there's no world governing body. We all, you know, I'd love, to, love there to be a world governing body like FIFA, although obviously they have their problems. But I mean, you know, a world governing body where we're all sticking to the same rules. But it's not going to happen in my time with the Boxing Board of Control. 
and I don't know whether it will happen for a lot for the next person taken after taken over after me. So you know we are where we are. I think we are very. I, I, I'm bound to say this because everybody will say, "Well, you're just sticking up for your officials." We have the best officials in the world. I I, I believe Howard Foster is one of the best referees in the world, and those judges sitting around there are some of the best officials that officiate well at t tournaments around the world. So I'm, I'm relatively I'm happy with that. Robert, I'm sure if Howard Foster had stopped it in the fourth round, um, loads of people would have been screaming that Josh Warrington should have been given more opportunity to, to get into the fight. Um, okay, okay, if I'm on that front, I'd be sitting here today explaining why he didn't let the fight go ahead. I mean, exactly, that's, a, exactly. that's an absolute fact. You know, well, listen, there's, there, there's a world champion, yeah. etc., and you didn't give him the opportunity yeah. to continue. And, and, and I know that, and you know that. We're in a sport of opinions. It's why it's such an amazing sport in lots of ways. And there's such a deep discussion about it's so discursive on so many things. And judging is always going to be subjective, no matter how you change the marking system. But what do you think? And it's been mooted before. What do you think about bringing in, if, 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 the, if the commissions, Boxing Board of Control, brought in a ranking system for judges so that the biggest and most high profile fights the, the the judges who are at the top of the list are the people who are put forward first of all to be in the three sides of of, of the ring for those bouts um i think that's quite difficult um because ultimately each commission has has the final approval of who can work in each country so if you go to Nevada, you've got no chance of getting a British referee. You may get a British judge if you're lucky and I'll do my job as best I can. You've got no chance of anything else. You go to other states in America. Don't forget, there's not even an American boxing border control. Every state looks after itself. So Nevada looks after itself. California looks after itself. I mean, they look after all athletic sports, boxing, MMA and whatever. So, so, that, so they're in a they different the position. They've got association of boxing yeah. commissions, haven't they? Yeah, yes, but, that's, but that, that, won't, that wouldn't do anything with regard to this, to be honest with you. Because However, each, each commission um, has the right to veto an, a, an official. And many, many a times I've sat there with my colleagues in the office and said, I don't want him, we'll have him. And I look at their record and what they've done. So there is a league to a certain extent, a very loose league, but there are some people that we will accept and some people we won't accept because of their record and what they've done in the past. Are you worried about perception from overseas? Because obviously Eddie Hearn went on TV straight after and he made a comment about the judging situation. And obviously you, you read stuff from fighters in America saying, oh, I'm not going to England to, because I don't think I'd get a fair shake. Are you worried about perception? Of course I am. Um, and I fully understand what Eddie's saying. Uh, I've been in discussions with Eddie's team, Frank Smith at Matchroom, Frank Warren's team, and Andy Erling, etc., with regard to uh, officials. I'm very strong that we should try and look after our officials the best we can with regard to, because I think they are the, one of some of the best officials in, in the world. Uh, and we have dis disagreements with that, but I fully understand what Eddie's saying. Um, do I agree fully? No, but I, ha I, I understand he has a point. Perception is obviously something that's difficult to get over sometimes. But I think on the whole, if, Adam, if you really think about it, um, you know, we're talking about, well, maybe two incidences over the last six months, I suppose, where people have really thrown their arms up saying this is, this is wrong, whatever. How many shows have we had? And how many boxing contests have we had? And we're talking about something that happened last week. I'm not saying that's wrong or right, because, you know, I take the criticism. I'm, you know, I'm human, you know, it upsets me, etc. Uh, and I know the people we're dealing with and the crit critics they get, I think is unfair. Um, but it's not that very, very often. And if you look around the rest of the world, I think we're pretty low down in the league with regard to problems going on in the country, going on in boxing tournaments. I'm, I'm assuming you're the other one that people found controversial was Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas, was it? Or No, no, that was, no, no, no. I didn't think that. that was a good result, I thought. Um, the last one was Martinez and Peter Barrow because Lewis Ritz. Oh yeah, Lewis Ritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh. you know, and on that occasion, you know, we went through the procedure. The, the judge who we thought was a bit way out, um, we called up. Uh, Terry O'Connor was called before the board. If the board decide to call these officials up, they will do. I'm a big, you know, whether I'm wrong or right. I mean, everything you look at, everything is instant. I don't think that's something the right thing to do. 
I think sometimes you have to sit back and look at the whole situation um, and then make a decision what you're going to do. Uh, that's and you've told Terry, you told Terry he can't watch Netflix on his phone while fights are going on, yeah? Well, he didn't have his phone with no, him. I know, um, I know. I'm during just... lockdown, lockdown <laughs> Netflix has, has actually saved a lot of people, I think, but still. <laughs> but no, so, so we do, we do, well, there is a procedure and we do adhere to it. And, uh, you know, if anything needs to be done, it will be done. Can I ask the last question here? And Adam may have another one, I don't know. But we had two months away, a hiatus. We were back last weekend. Um, how many events have we got from February to the end of March or maybe April? And uh, do you think we're in rude health? Well, I think we're, we're out. We've got shows every weekend. Um, as, you, as you know, we, we decided we should suspend the shows in January uh, for various reasons. So from the middle of February, we've got, we've got a show last week. We've got two shows. I'm in Bolton tonight in my uh, hotel room at the present time, waiting to go to the show. Um, then we've got a show at Wembley, which I'll be going down from one bubble to another bubble for tomorrow. Then next week, we've got a show at the Copper Box. The week after that, we're meant to be going to Wembley for Vivian White and uh, Povetkin. And then after that is every weekend. So uh, we're as busy as we've ever been. The, 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 the issue is that um, we would normally have, um, I mean, not last year, obviously, because of the circumstance we was under, but the year before, we had 270 shows. So we're working virtually every weekend, um, two or three fights every weekend. At the moment, it's one major show on a Friday or a Saturday, which actually is taking more work because of logistics and all the COVID testing and all the doctors' things you've got to go through, etc. So you know, we're—I think we're in rude health. I think we're okay. Um, and I actually think, and although people will say you're bound to say that, is as a sport, I think we've managed it very well. Um, I think the promoters have been fantastic. Um, I think all my bosses who I have to report to have been very supportive, not always been agreeing with what we're trying to do, but we've, we've got there. And, you know, okay, we started last week with a few controversies, but we started. And we've got a great show tonight in Bolton, and we've got a great show tomorrow at Wembley, and we've got a good show next week. So, you know, happy days. Absolutely. No, no more, more further questions from me. I just want to say thank you, Robert, because in every other sport, we wouldn't get the opportunity to speak to someone uh, of your stature on the things that happened the week previous. So thank you so much for your time uh, and giving it up and being so honest and transparent with your answers as well. So thank you very much for that. No problem, Adam. Absolutely no problem at all. And uh, it's, I'm obviously in a good mood because Cambridge is the top of the league. So uh, <laughs> everything is perfect at the present time. <laughs> Come back in a couple of weeks and we may have slipped a few places. I might not be so nice. <laughs> anyway, God bless you all. Take care. And Cheers, you, sir. Cheers, Cheers, Adam. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Well